Hell's Court, written by Kevin's New Horizon, illustrated by Jen Craft. Warning, the story you're about to hear has adult subject matter, including drug addiction, depression, and murder. Even though this story is fiction, if you do not wish to hear this story, I understand and have a nice day. For the rest of you, enjoy the story. Pre-trial, as Jane makes her way to her courtroom, she starts to remember the rules of the dead. It's the same as the living, only I can send them to hell early if I must. If I make a bad judgment, it won't just be my life, but this town's life in danger. Jane talks to herself. Am I really the right person for this? I'll be lucky if I don't run into anyone I killed in there. As Jane makes it to the door, she takes a deep breath. Let's do this. As Jane enters the courtroom, everything changes, including Jane's appearance. All right. The Honorable Judge Jane is here. Jim the zombie looking pleased at what he sees. She does have a nice rack. Jane finally reaches to her seat. Finally, with a wicked smile, she addressed the court. You may have your seat and welcome to Hell's Court. Your first trial involves a big bad wolf. Good luck, my judge, you're going to need it. State your name for the record. Jane says confidently. Big be your honor. The wolf said in a deep voice. Mr. Big be you're facing two counts of destruction of property, one count of aggravated murder, and four counts of attempted murders. How do you plead? Jane already knew the answer, but had to ask by law. Not guilty. Zombies gasp. Why are they in shock? Of course he is going to say not guilty. Jane said in her head. What does the court call first? The dead call Fiddler to the stand. Fiddler the pig stands and walks to the witness stand. Who knew the big bad wolf survived being shot by the hunter, but also being tried too? Was there a reason why the wolf went after them? This case is off to an interesting start. State your name for the court, please. Fiddler the pig. Fiddler the pig winks. The undead attorney asks a series of questions. Where are your siblings? They're in Hell's Hospital due to that wolf's actions. What happened that day? Well, I get a knock on the door asking me to let him in. I didn't since my home is also a shop and we weren't open. What do you sell in your shop? Fiddler caught off guard says. Well, you know. Different things from cookies to TVs. Oink oink. Jane says he's lying. However, it doesn't answer why Bigby attacked them. What did Bigby do to your home? He blew the damn door down. Seriously, how much freaking air did he inhale to do such damage to my home and property? Fiddler yelled. During the cross-examination, Jane looks over the photo evidence and noticed a lab in the back room as well as fur, but is too small for Bigby. She knows there's more to what Fiddler has provided and can tell he's putting on an act. Jane enters the well about to question Fiddler herself. So normally a judge can question a witness, however it is only used sparingly. I can get this pig to reveal more than what he's leading on. And like the filthy little pig he is, I give him something he wants. I can de. Jane enters the well with the pig still in the witness stand. 
With her spell activated she starts to undo her robe. None of the zombies can see her use this spell except for one. Mr. Pig. Was it? Jane says softly. Could you please explain what's in the back room? Woo woo please? Woo woo. As she showed him the photo she reveals less parts of her robe revealing more cleavage than usual. Um that's uh... You have a very beautiful body. Oink oink. Fiddler is slowly falling under the judge's spell. Hee <laughs> hee. Thank you. But won't you be a good piggy and tell me please? Why do you have nice fur in your home? Jane's appeal is speeding up the spell and before you know it. Okay. Okay. We sell animal fur and we make our own drugs in the back. I'm the next Walter White Yell. Jane asks one more question before the spell wears off. So you're also a drug dealer? Oh god, yes. Oh, I'll give you any drug you want. Please, please let me touch you, O-I-N-K, O-I-N-K, O-I-N-K. Fiddler oinks uncontrollably. I have no further questions and get this filthy pig out of my sight. You sick bastard. Jim looking upset said out loud for the court to hear. That should have been me. Not him. You lucky bastard. Jane walks back to her seat and addresses the court. Who does the dead call next? The dead call Red to the stand. State your name for the record. Little Red Riding Hood. Said Red in a polite manner. You mean like the DC comic Red Hood? Jane thought in her head. State what happened when you got to your grandmother's house. Asked the attorney. Well, I went to visit my grandma and I noticed something strange. The door was unlocked, which is never like grandma. Go on, please. Then I heard a voice that sounded like grandma in her room. She or him said, don't come any closer. I started pointing out his features, saying what big eyes he had. When I mentioned his teeth, he said it was meant to eat me and then attacked me. Jane, curious about the wound, asked to see her arm. May we see where he bit you, please? Red lifts her arm to reveal puncture wounds. Upon inspection, Jane notices the details on her arm. These marks are too small be a bite mark. Jane knows this from experience when a wolf almost killed her partner during a hunt back when she was a gun for hire. These marks came from a needle. Red's a drug addict. How long has she been using and was she using her grandmother to get money for her fix? I can't let this go. Hey dudes, Randy Derrier. Things are getting a little out of control, so let me explain what Hell Court is. First, Hell Court takes on cases that only the dead can handle. We deal with different types of creatures. From zombies to demons to things you only hear in fairy tales. However, we don't pledge here as there's no use. We're already dead one way or another. The juries are zombies that help the judge decide the fate of the accused. But just like in your court, it's up to the judge what type of punishment is received. Also, judges are selected via a special examination which they themselves don't know about. We feel it is necessary for the judge to be neither good nor evil, but you know. Human. Judges also have special spells to help gather information from cross-examinations. These spells have different effectives as some spells can only affect the witness or light the whole courtroom on fire. Seriously, we had a judge do that once and he was in pretty big trouble. I liked him too. Lenny! Lenny, what are you doing here? I want to help too. Fine, I'll let you do the rest, but so help me and all that is dear. If you screw me, I'll have the hunter that shot mom come and finish the job on you. Geez, all right. Randy can be a real jackass sometimes. Anyways, the attorney cannot overpower the judge as the judge has free reign over the court. Trails only last one day and must be finished before the day is over. Or else the dead will leave the courthouse and, well, you don't want to be around a hungry zombie. Also, judges only retain their formal in the courtroom. 
Once they leave the room, they will return to their normal form, and their spells can't be used outside of court unless the judge within is needed. Okay, Lenny, I want to speak again. But Randy, I'm not finished. Don't care, Judge. Says it's my turn. No, damn it, it's mine. Wait, Lenny, what is she? Lenny, Ron! But most important, enjoy the trials. Because let's face it, law and order has nothing on us. Little Red's addiction may have cost her more than just this wolf's freedom. I can show the court the ugliness that's inside her. I'll use inner strength. Jane walks to Red. Little Red, can you look at your arm again, please? Sure, I guess I could. <coughs> Red's arm is thin to the bone and her face pale. The juries are shocked by her appearance, which is funny because they look like her. You motherless whore, what the hell did you do to me? You lied to me about your wound. And I don't like being lied to. So I brought out your ugly side. Don't know why you're upset. You shoot up that shit up like candy. I can return you to normal, but only if you tell me the truth. If you lie to me again, not only will I know, but the whole world will see you for who you really are. You low-life drug addict. Jane said with a smile. Fine, you witch! I got a tip from the pig that Bigby was coming for me. So I had my boyfriend, the hunter, kill my grandma and arranged it as if the wolf ate her. Why would he come for you? Because I helped murder his family. We skin the pups to sell to feed my addiction. And where is the hunter? I swear I don't know. Please, please return me to normal. I already hate my life as it is. I lost everything. Bailiff, arrest her. I want to hear the wolf's side of the story. At the request of Jane, Big B walked to the witness stand. His tail low and his mood broken. Jane turns to Big B and said, Do you have any final statements, Mr. Wolf? Said Jane. With a broken heart, Big B said, Your Honor, I won't deny that I did break into the three little pigs' homes. The only pig that was innocent is Pfeiffer, and he had nothing to do with the other pig shady dealings. I'm so sorry, Pfeiffer. I let my blind rage get the best of me. I hope you can forgive me. But if you don't, I fully understand. Big B continues with tears coming from his eyes. When I arrived at Grandma's house, she was already sitting in her bed, almost waiting for me. She was sorry about what happened to my family. She was sorry for covering Red's actions. I wanted to kill her there, but I couldn't. Grandma pet my ears as I cried in her lap. I know Red was all she had and she didn't want to lose her even if it was feeding her addiction. However, I look up to see Grandma shot someone shot her with a bullet that seems to expand her wound, matching my teeth marks. Red walked in moments later to find what happened. She screamed at me calling me a killer. I did push Red as I was trying to escape. Then I was shot by the hunter and was later arrested. Sarah, my love, I'm so sorry. I couldn't protect you or pups. Ryan and Rebecca, I failed you as a father. I miss them so much. Why didn't I die with them? Jane listening to his words find that he's being honest. I understand how you feel. The world views us as predators looking to ruin any hope. But in reality, we're just scared of losing what's closest to us. In your case, it was your family that kept you going. I'm sorry judging you so harshly in the one we meet. I guess I was holding something against you. Something you had no part in. Forgive me, Big B. Jane asked Big B to come down the stand. She then dismisses the dead to determine the fate of Big B. Jane walks out of the court to collect her thoughts. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray As you fade away, yeah, 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 yeah. As you fade away, yeah, 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 yeah. The 
bailiff escort the dead to another to room to discuss the verdict. Meanwhile, Jane returns to her office. She returns to her normal form and is upset. What the hell is wrong with me? Jane said trying to process what happened. I used my body to get a confession from a pig and then turned a girl into a ghoul. I may have done some mess up stuff back when I was a gun for hire. But I would never use my body to gain the upper hand. Nor would I have carved up a girl's face to get what I want. Jane sits on her desk with a drink in hand. And what's worse was that I felt like I was enjoying every minute of it. Like I was drunk with power. I need another drink. Jane opens her cabinet to find an empty bottle. Of course it's empty. Jane examines the bottle to see a reflection of herself. Her face retaining the physical beauty. I can't let the judge define who I am. Yes, I am a monster behind a beautiful face, but I'm trying to change. Make up for the past sins I committed. That's why I wanted to be a judge in the first place. Be the hero and protect anyone innocent being screwed over by the justice system. I guess this is my curse after all. Jane takes a look at the clock. For 20 ha, huh, I guess I should head back. Court will end soon. This time let's end this for good. As she leaves the room, the bottle reflects the judge's true form. Jane walks back to her seat and asks the jury's verdict. We have your honor and I must say you have a nice. Stick to the verdict, please. Jane said with a smirk. Right, sorry. For the murder of Grandma, we find the defendant not guilty. For the four counts of attempted murder, we find the defendant not guilty on three. We find him guilty on one count. For two counts of destruction of property, guilty only on one count. The other not guilty. So he's guilty on two charges. His reasons for his crimes are understandable. However, his dangerous actions put an innocent pig in the hospital and ruined any evidence we could have used against the pigs. I could have him killed and he probably would want that. Seeing as what happened to his family, he's got nothing to live for. However, as judge, I think I know a better solution on how to sentence him. Do you like kids, Mr. Bigby? I owe a young child my life, Your Honor. A few years back, I got caught in a bear trap. A little boy came to my rescue and cleaned my wounds. He tried lifting me up, but couldn't. So his mates came to help. He told me I could live in his mansion, but I declined. I believe they called him Young Master. I hope he's okay, Your Honor. I sentenced Bigby to community service to a children's hospital. As I watch him from outside the room, he's playing with a child. The hospital was okay with adopting him and to be honest, he seems okay with it too. Despite his violent nature, he does well with children. I guess the children remind him of the boy that saved him. Maybe this is his way of repaying a debt to him. Bigby still misses his family and begins to cry. The child holds him calming the beast and kisses his ear. Mr. Bigby, will you be my protector? I'm scared of the dark. Big B licks the boy and wags his tail accepting the task. I love you Mr. Big B, said the child. I hope you find peace in your new home. Sorry for judging you thinking you were the big bad wolf everyone says. I should know how that feels myself. Take care of yourself Big B, I know you'll give these children what the world didn't. A second chance. The end. Hello stranger, I'm Big B. After I served my time I decided to stay at this hospital. At first I didn't understand why I would be sent here to begin with. I'm too big to be seen as a dog and yet they accepted me with no questions asked. The children love me and I see them as my pups. A little boy asked me to be his protector and at the moment I was not a monster, but a knight. However he died two months later from cancer. The family let me attend his funeral and I wept with his family. I still think about him every day and I promise to protect this hospital for him. 
I was a big hit that the hospital adopted more wolves for the children. I even got to start another family and I have a beautiful pup named Daniel. I still think about my old family and cry almost every night for them, but the children, the children saved me again. I may have the title as Big Bad Wolf, but to them I'm Mr. Big B. And I much prefer this title than the other. Thank you stranger for listening to my story. Farewell.